<laughs> Hang on, he doesn't have the wire switched here. <laughs>
We heard about the one in Birmingham where the thing met. And the service went on for weeks. But then after the meeting stopped, we were not here to go. And there seemed to be no lasting results. One of the men said Friday night that was in the revival last year at Nackenville. Said he went back this year, but he said it was not so. I wonder what happened. I wonder what happened. Revivals are meant to last. But if something don't happen to us, these revivals will never last. They'll never go beyond the emotions of the meetings. And one of the reasons that we, I believe, that revivals are not taking hold today, and people's lives are not changed, is because there is too much focus today upon the revival spirit. It's all about the speaker. Come hear so and so. Come see so and so. Come hear the great music that we're going to have. The revival is about the word of God being awakened in our spirit. A revival is something that takes place in our mind as a renewal. That is personal. Doesn't have anything to do with who's speaking. It doesn't have anything to do with the music. But it has everything to do about I hunger to have a, a closer relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what it's all about. And if we don't have that hunger, and we're not thirsting for that fresh water, then revivals are not going to be anything more than a series of meetings. And then we look at the other side of it. There is revivals today that are taking place that are nothing more than an out, an emotional outpouring. And all of us know when it comes to our emotions, our emotions can be high today, but be on rock bottom tomorrow. And a revival is not built upon emotional activity in a church, but it's built upon the relationship in the church between the individual and the Lord Jesus Christ and the Word of God. So this, this morning, as we look at our scripture, in Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, he said, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Now verse 2 is what I want you to think about. And be not conformed to this world. In that word, world means humanity, our system. Do not be conformed to humanity and the system that's going on in the world today. But may you transform by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So then, verse 2 tells us what a revival is. A revival is not being conformed to celebrity status, but revival is about being transformed by what takes place in our mind. The mind is such a vital part of who we are. The mind is the part that plays in our acceptance of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's with the mind that we accept Christ as our Savior. It's that is where we make the decision. But based upon the knowledge of knowing that we're sinners and we need a Savior, and the knowledge of, of that Savior is Jesus Christ Himself, and based upon that, 
then we make a decision to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior. You can't make it any simpler than that. That's just, that's why the Bible said that it's so simple that a child can understand it. So then with the mind, we accept Christ. But also with the mind, we are transformed. Transformed in the walk. Into being a people that is acceptable and perfect for the will of God. That's what He wants us to be. Now when I read over in verse 16, it says, Be of the same mind, one to one another, mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate, be not wise in your own concepts. The renewing of a mind. There has got to be some changes in the mindset of the people today in order for us to have revival. There has to be some renewed thinking in our mind if we are going to understand and sort out all the confusion that is in the world today and in our churches. My friend, I will say to you, if I did not know the Lord Jesus Christ as our own personal Savior this morning, and if I were a lost person trying to find the truth today, the way the church is divided, the way that they have di divided the body of Christ and torn apart, I don't know how anybody comes to know Jesus Christ or sin. One says this and one says that, and one says another, and nobody knows what to believe. Why? Because the Bible teaches us that there will be men that will come in as false prophets. There will be men and women that will come in in sheep's clothing, but inward they are raving wolves. There is people who are trying to devour the body of Christ and destroy it today. But we've got to have a renewed mind. And what do I mean by this? A renewed mind. A renewed mind that will transform us that we will be in the perfect will of God. But how do we do it? How do we sort it out? How do we sort out all this mess that the, that the world is in today? Do we, do, do we sort it out by the coming of Baptists? No. Because Baptists is just as confused as others. Do we sort it out by becoming a part of the charismatic movement? No. They lead people in a path of confusion. Do we, do we sort it out by, by joining this clip or that clip or believing this or believing that? No. The only way that we can, can ever come to a renewed mind is to be aware of what God says and let everybody else be alive. That goes against what God says. God's Word is the only thing that can give us a renewed spirit today. And God's Word will be used by the Holy Spirit of God to give us that renewed awareness of what God wants for our life and not what they want. Now, I, I, want, to, I want to just share some things with you. And, and I put all of these together a little while ago. But I found this renewed spirit and about us being aware of what's going on with us. You see, most people don't have any idea of what's going on with them. And so uh, they don't realize the division that is in the body of Christ. And the body of Christ is not supposed to have division. The body of Christ 
is supposed to be one spirit, and that's the Holy Spirit of God. The body of Christ is supposed to have one work, and that is to be God's kingdom. But to hear people today, in this world we live in, there are nothing in the world that confuses the people, and people are not aware of what is taking place. I'm going to give you a few things here. Just this kind of an eye opener that will get you to thinking about the Word of God. To get you thinking about what God's Word says and not what man says. Can I just tell you this morning that what I say is not important, but what the Word of God says is important. If there's going to be a renewing of your mind, and the Spirit of God is going to move in your life, and make changes in your life, and help you to get in the acceptable and perfect will of God, you got to come back to the Lord. Now let's, let's, let's make you aware of some things this morning. Now let's first of all, because we're having to deal with it, is uh, the tongues movement. Well, what is right? What is right? The Word of God is right. And I'm going to give you an example of this that was on TV. And that that were on TV, and this guy by the name of Sid Roth was hosting the show. And he had a huge congregation of people. And they were sitting out there and he said, I'm going to teach you how to speak in tongues this morning. Well, that goes against the Word of God. I can't teach you how to speak in tongues. The Bible said it's a gift that comes from God, not comes from man. And he said, I'm going to teach you how to speak in tongues. He said, first of all, start talking like a little baby. And he started this. And then before long, he was yelling all of this, this garbage. I don't know any idea what he was saying. All the congregation, it sounded like a house of what? A man. You look at that and you say, whoa, whoa, they've got something good. They've got something that we don't have here. No, they've got something that is not God. They've got something that's out of the will of God. Now, if you won't believe me, then must go to the authority. Where is the authority? The authority is what? The Word of God. So they don't take my word. Let's go back to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Now, let's begin reading in verse 23 through 28. Now, I want to show you that this was, God had nothing to do with it. This was just something that man had made up, and everybody thought, I'll break that once. But look at what he said. If therefore the whole church did come together in one place, and all speak with tongues. And there come in those that are unlearned or unbelievers. Will they not say, but they're mad. What is going on here? Now, I, I can't understand the thing that they're doing. They're mad people. Now look at what he said. But if all prophecy, prophesy, and there come in one that believeth not, or one unlearned, he is convinced of all that he is judged of all. And thus are the secrets of his heart made manifest. And so falling down on his face, he will worship God and report that God is in you, in you of truth. Prophesying, preaching. But how? What are you going to understand? What an unlearned man comes in, or an unbeliever comes in, then he can understand what's being said. And when he understands what's being said from the Word of God, his heart becomes pricked by the Holy Ghost of God, and he falls upon his face and he gets saved. That's what the Word of God says. How is it then? Brethren, we 
when you come together, every one of you have a song. That have a doctrine. Have a tongue. Have a revelation. Have an interpretation. He said, let all things be done unto the edifying. Now listen to what he said here. This is the word of God. If any man speak in an unknown tongue, if any man speak in a tongue, is what it's supposed to be. Look at that word unknown. You see it's in italics. That word is not in the original text. That's not in the Bible. That was inserted by the ones who who uh, interpreted it. They added that. So if any man speak in a tongue, let it be done by two or at the most by three. Have anyone thrown in on the TV program? The whole crowd is being done on national TV. I'm telling you, it sounded to me like a bunch of Indians on the wall. <laughs> and all they needed was a few rifles and four arrows and they began to shoot. And he said, and he said, if any man speak in a tongue, let it be done by two or at the most by three, and that by, uh, by course, and let one interpret. Well, there was nobody interpreting what was going on. Because nobody had any idea of what was going on. No, no. See, Paul, when you go by him on TV, and he's on one of those channels, you turn it. Don't listen to him. He's not a God. I'm telling you. And he said, but if there be no interpreter, let him keep silent in the church and let him speak to himself in the God. Talking about the angels. I'll tell you, in a few weeks on Wednesday night, you can start coming. I'm going to preach. I'm going to teach on this. I'm going to teach you. I'm going to, I'm going to show you what the Bible has to say about this. And it talks about tongues. It's talking about angels. There is no such thing as an angel in the Somebody knows it. Somebody can interpret it. But this makes sense. So then, that's nothing but confusion to the church. It does nothing. And, and, and what did he say? Did, did God say that verse 33? Look at verse 33. For God is not the author of confusion. Well, if you were in, let's just say this morning. Then I was up here, and, and I was just going, and 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 and, 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 and you, all of you just started going off on and, and speaking something that nobody could understand. Could you pray for me? Would that not be confusion? Do you think that God's in the midst of confusion? He's saying what? No word of God said what? Now, let's look at something else that's very popular today. Let's look. And read Jordan in Morgan's song. Let's look at him. How many of y'all know who Rick Jordan is? You know what they say is? He's a modern day prophet. Now, when Rick Jordan's preaching, did you know that you're not allowed to have your Bible in the church with you? One man carried his into one of the services and two men came to the strong army and they took him out. Why? Because Rick Jordan is a modern day prophet and he is speaking the words of God and you don't need them. Well, now I ask you this. The men of old that spoke of God and spoke from God that God spoke to them, what it did, did it become? Bible. Is that right? It, 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 it is this writ by, written by the men who spoke that God spoke to them and told them that they were the prophet and the apostles and the big that. Well then, let me ask you something. Why did Rick Jordan then write the Bible? Right? Why didn't he write the Bible? If he's getting it straight from God, then God said, and telling him what to write down and tell the people to write down, well, why don't you write the Bible? I can tell you why. Look at Revelation chapter 22. 
Let's go to the Bible. Let's don't go to me. Don't listen to what I have to say. But let's listen to what the Word of God says. Look at it. Now, this is the closing. This is the book of Revelation. This is the closing. This is the unveiling of God's plan and God's Word. And here's what he said, beginning in verse 18 of chapter 22. John said unto the anointing of God, for I testify unto every man that hear up the words of the prophets of this book. This book. This book. If any man shall add anything to this, if any man should add anything to this, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. Written book is a false prophet. Trying to add to the word of God, but he won't call it a Bible. Taking away from the word of God. Is that me talking? Or did I read it to you? You know what Rick Jonah sounds like to me? It sounds to me like Tazwell Russell. We'd say, who's Tazwell Russell? He's the one who wrote the book about Jehovah. Jehovah Witness. You ever seen the old green book that he's written that says there's no hell in it? Well, that's a lie book to them. And that's why they add it to the word of God. And what does the Bible say will happen to those that add to it? What about the Holy Church? That has written the book called the Book of Mormon to add to this book. That's why I tell you today that the Mormons are a false cult also, just like the Jehovah Witness. And just like Morning Star and Rick John. I tell you what I got. I got, I got two books in uh, Rick John's house. I wouldn't have none of my life. I'm going to throw them in the trash. I don't want nothing to write to me that's trying to add to the word of God to me. I don't want nothing that God that, that, that can produce me. You say, I'm not aware of all this. That's why we're perfect right today. That's why we need a renewal. That's why we need a renewal of a mind to help us to understand. You watch all this. You study it and you work. What about Kill a Pope? Any of you ever watch Kill a Pope? You know who he is? He's all over the TV. Cross the country. He believes that, that everybody should be rich. That's what we're talking about. Why not rich? So long? Does that mean that I'm taking it? Does that mean that I don't have a, all of this? Well, you know, he got to he, he said, when he got the first check, he said the Lord told him that he should have more than one check. He didn't give nothing. It's funny that the Lord don't tell me that. The Lord tells me when he blesses me, he says, take the house of God and get it. Don't take it and spend it on yourself. Don't take it and glorify yourself. Don't take it and live in your own luxury. When I bless you, take it to the house of God and give it. Give it back. But what? Does the Bible say that? Again, I can say a lot of things, but what does the Bible say? Oh, man, that you tell Let's listen to the words of Jesus. Lay not 
Father, in the beginning works none of the kingdom. Of Matthew chapter 6. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth. Where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where things break the road the spirit. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust will appear. And where things do not break the road nor spirit. For where your treasure is, that's where your
He stood on what the Word of God said, not what man said. And when they were all like this get in here, and they're sitting here shouting and praising God, he stood on what God said. He didn't stand on what man said. Let's look at some heads here. Here we go. One gentleman. One of my. I just want to know what this is. Me and Charles are on the same page. To read it. So. All these books that says that people are not in the past. You believe what they said to you? They saw what you know. They came back all the story what they saw all the way back. All the different stories. Well, what's your first thing? Go back to I can tell you what happened. But he 
say it's not like they need to be removed in order to get free of them. Why? And they don't have to. Not them. Not them. We have got to, somehow, some way, come back to the Word of God. Come back to, to, to someone that can help us to understand and that someone is the Holy Spirit of God that can open up our mind and help us to understand what the truth is. Because we're living in a world of lies. We're living in a world of lies. And you know who this is? And you know why we're attacking our young people and why we're getting our young people? is because we that are adults are not teaching and telling our young people. We're not sorting out these lines from the truth. Why? Because most adults don't know the truth either. Is that right? And yet, when we have Bible study, we don't show up. When we teach it, we have Don't you know that you need every ounce of knowledge that you can get from this world? Why? Because you make decision after decision after decision every day. And if you don't know this world, then you're going to make bad decisions. You're going to make decisions based upon the lies that this world has given you, the lies that these, that these cults have split it off. And tell them how many people You see, we do do the work in that. Or if they have to do it. Not in the Bible. Everything is not there. No emotion. Everything is not there. Out of spot. You see, the movie thing is, why are they doing that? They're creating more and more of things that are coming over the world. You know what? I used to watch those little old restaurants. And I, and I still love them. And you know what? I started watching more real women. When I'm watching those old kind of restaurants, I begin to look at when the guys don't really know these women. No, 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 and they never loaded their numbers. Well, I got curious about that. How did they do that? Well, let's just see such an attempt that they do it. You know, <laughs> but that was when, you know, you hit a guy, you hear a racket, they do You know, they get all out. But you see, we went far beyond that. We, we, we're at the point now where a man can be going down the road and eating some different machine. Am I right? And we all know that's not so. That, that's a fancy land. Then none of us realize what Walt Disney was doing to us when he invaded Mickey and Minnie. Am I right? Because we're living in Mickey and Minnie. Whoa! That ain't how you do Mickey and Minnie. Sure. Good. If anybody raises their hand, if they do, please, I'll take you down to my office and we'll talk about this. But you see, in this late moment, in word that every human is like magic. Go in and 
And guess what? The testing fell through. Then you go in and there's moments of, I mean, I will tell you no fortune. I will look at the ball and I will tell you what's going to happen here. And I pray, Lord, that people will realize today and be a life of God. 